Hey, good day, good day, good day, good day. Hey, folks, thank you for joining me. Thank you for joining me. Right now, what I'm doing is I'm sitting down talking to no other than Terrence Gangster William, the original Hot Boys. You know, my topic of the day is what do two OGs, you know, right now, I grew up in a small country, Brooklyn, New York. Where you grew up at, Terrence? New Orleans, baby, born and raised. New Orleans, okay. You sit back and think about it right now is, to me, we grew up in, you know, like New York, what's considered to be the city. You grew up in New Orleans. What they consider New Orleans to be? The city, because, you know, all our outskirts, we call them the country, you know, the country boys. Okay. But uh, New Orleans, we consider that the city. But, you know, down south here, they see all of us country, but it's yeah. still our city. Okay, still your city, man. Yeah. But anyway, right now, like I say, let's get this started, man. First of all, welcome home, man. Welcome Thank home, you, man. Because once again, like I said right now, even doing our little brief conversation, even when I saw you on Vlad, shout out to Vlad, because I think right now is even when my man, Katik, shout out to Katik, he sent me the piece, and I'm listening to it. And right now is, I'm like, why would Katik send me this piece? But as I'm listening to it, and I'm listening to the humbleness, man, one thing about you is like, I can feel it. The sincerity, the humbleness, like they're saying right now, where it's like the change. And that's it. Because once again, when I start asking questions about who are you, you know what I'm saying? Who is Terrence Gangster William? When I start asking that question, my man, like down there, they say, yo, man, that guy was the real deal. You know, right now was he was like y'all guys when y'all was young. And not only that, they made plenty of money. And they got into the record industry. So the different, even with that being said, man, you know, how the heck, like you say, like, y'all making the money. What, what happened? Why you just say, man, later for that, I'm going legit. Greed. Greed. Wanting attention. And loving the attention, the spotlight. Because, you know, when you come up in the hood, it's like, you always got somebody in your hood that you look up to, or you uh, see somebody driving a nice car, you be like, yo, I want that. I want that attention. I want the women to be crazy, but I want this. So at the time that I was in the street, I always said I was married to the gang. I was married to the street. So when when Baby and Slim was uh, pursuing their music, I was making more money selling heroin or robbing somebody or you know doing something violent um, to get money than what they were doing with the music industry. So that was a no-brainer for me. I was like, no, oh, man, I'm not about to give up my jungle, way of life. This is what it is, you know? And you know, when you're young, you're young and ignorant. So in your mind, you're thinking like, man, I'm untouchable. You know, I'm on top. People scared of me. I got cruel killers coming with me. You know, we got, we got money. We can touch whoever we want to touch. You know, we ride nice, we dress nice. We got cars, we got girls. Holy looking for us, enemy looking for us. So that's exciting. It's ignorant, but it's exciting as a youngster. And that just what drove me to keep like, man. And then I always was told it's a lie that the feds can't tap your prime code phone. So in my mind, I had this a burner phone I should be on. I mean, yeah, I could talk on my prime code phone, but I didn't want to talk on my other phone. And all the while, the feds, it took, took me like two, three months to tap my phone. But man, I was just in love with the streets. I just I, you know, I, I didn't want to divorce the streets. Okay. You know what? Like, look what you say. You didn't want to divorce the street. But sit back and think about it. Because once again, I became who I became. I became Brian Glaze Gibbs between the age of 14 to 24. So you look at 14, I'm still got snot in my nose, stained in my underwears or whatever. But yet still, I was infatuated. You like light camera action. I was in fact with that street life. And you know what? I became something between the age of 14 to 24. Because that's what, like, if you listen to what people say about me, some is true and a lot is not. At one point in time, they trying to give me a murder from June 1987 up until November 88. They talk about right now I had a murder a week. And you know what? That was not the case. But once again, like sit back and think about it. How in the heck, you know what I'm saying, between the years of 14 and 24, I became this individual. Then I'm listening to your story because you went away at what age? The age I went away? Yes. To the Fed, 23. 23. So even right now, when I, when I, I remember running to Akbar Prey. 
know what I'm saying? Kingpin from Jersey, Newark. And mm -hmm. when he, he looking at how old you are, and I'm telling him, 24, man, y'all, you're, you're a kid. So even right now is, so you went away to the feds at 23. How old was you you first got into the street? Man, I was like, okay, when I first got in the police car, I was nine years old, eight or nine. Uh, I'll try breaking my, uh, my my cousin house stayed next door and still as a tar. And the people on the other side of the house, they, they, they didn't like me. I had to beat the little boy up, so they called the police on me. But I got in the game of uh, selling weed at 11, or like 10 or 11, I want to say 11 years old. And uh, my best friend Mosquito, one of the original high boys, he graduated first selling crack. You know, but, you know, we would stay out 11, 12 years old, 13 years old. We would stay out, steal cars all night. But we would pull up in front of my mother's house and sleep in the car. And she would bang on the window because she's working at the Sheraton Hotel let us know, hey, I'm going to call the police, get the car in front of my door. So that let us know, okay, it's school time. Now it's time to go steal the donuts. We got to get our breakfast. So, you know, I was just young and wild, man. I just born to be in the streets, you know. Now, even with that, like you say, man, like at nine years old is the first time you got arrested. So you like you like like to me, like I can't even fathom that because at nine, even you still you a baby as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. No, no, no disrespect, but I'm saying nine years old. You know, so even right now is even now. You being who you are today, you being a changed Muslim, you being that changed grown man right now is even if you see a nine year old out there doing what you were doing, what would you think? What would you feel? How would you think? Now, it depends on what he's doing in, in the situation. I would try to pull him up and explain to him or what now with technology today, I can show him clips of me talking about my story and let him know, hey. I left at 23. I come home in 40, in 47. I was 47. You know, I, come, I just come home. I've been home like six months now. So, you know, all my 30s in prison. So at the end of the day, you know, you're still young. You still have a whole life ahead of you. So you have a chance to stop now. But I do realize this, too, because I come up, um, I didn't want to hear nothing. You know, these youngsters, you could tell it to them. But the first they're going to say, man, you old and washed up, man. Shut up. I don't want to hear that. You know what I'm saying? So. I had this lady, man, she had wrote me, you know, she had a, her, her son and two nephews. And I had did an article, I think it was in the Ozone magazine. And she was like, my son have a story pretty much like yours. His brother was shot in the club and killed. And um, I let him read your story. Four months later, this lady contacted me. She was like, um, I just want to let you know my son got his act together. My other nephew got his act together. But my uh, one of my nephews, He's facing the first degree murder. He's 15 years old. So in my mind, I'm like, you know, some people be wanting at least one out of three. I got two out of three, you know, to get on the right path, you know. But and my heart went out to the young boy because he was 15. And I was going to jail, you know, for murders, breaking out of juvenile jail at that time. But I was young and wouldn't think. But now that I'm older, I sit back and I'm like, wow, I did some wild, crazy, ignorant, dumb stuff. You know, but at the time you couldn't tell me that was something that was wrong. At the time that was pretty cool because you got the girls and everybody cheering me on. You know, go, 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 and I'm just head first. And, and you know what? Even with that being said, like right now, like you say, here it is. Somebody reach out to you, and you want to get in contact with them. They listen to your story, how you put that in the article, you put it out there. Because once again, like to me, and that's what I did. It's like out of everything I went through. And like you say, getting caught up in the street life, want to be down, want to be cool. I call it the Grand Theft Auto because once again, I didn't play games when I was a kid. So to me, as I sit back and think about it, the way things are now, like these kids play with these games, Grand Theft Auto and all this other stuff. You know what? And then they want to take it. They feel they master it, you know, on a television set or with a whatever box, a Xbox. Now they want to take it and apply it in real life. And to me, like I always try to tell people, listen, man, I was that test dummy. If I put my hand on the stove and I burn myself and I'm telling you, listen, Terrence, listen, anybody that's out there, listen, it's not worth it. It's going to hurt. Like I'm saying, if you pick up that brick, throw it at that prison wall, it's going to cause you to go to jail. Not only that, that jail system is now what? A billion dollar a year operation, billions. Right now, beforehand, what we talk about, when we talk about slavery, slavery was consists of a color. It was a dark skin complexion of your, your complexion, your skin. 
Now, slavery is consists of green, dollar bill, y'all. They would put anybody, their mama, in jail for that dollar bill. So once again, like I say, when you're able to get back and speak and tell your testimony and letting people know your experience, like you was down with one of the group, like you, that crew that you was with, your brother, you know what I'm saying? Right now was Birdman. You know what I'm saying? What, what, what that little sign y'all do, man? Like, what's that, what's that little sign, man? I don't know. I'm old school, man. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 OG. And, hey, Juvenile, Little Wayne. Yo. What I'm saying is, come on, man. <laughs> hey, OG. <laughs> listen to me, man. I'm going to be honest with you. I can sit here and listen to you all day. Because it's like, brothers like you, I can feed on. You know, because when you come from prison and you expecting to see one thing, but then you see you met with a brick wall, or something different. Now your mind start to play the tricks. Now back to that slavery. Now your mind is, 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 is you, 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 you trap and your mind is like, do I go back to the block? Do I have to go back and show them like, listen, I still got it. You know, don't play with me. Or do I say, you know what? God put me here. He gave me a second chance. I can just give my me my message out to the average youth and whoever else that want to hear it and just live my life, you know. And I ch I chose this side because at the end of the day, I know how I feel to ride a, a, a foreign car, OG. You know, I was in first one in my city with the uh, uh, QX4 Infinity SUV. I had a license plate on there with a picture of me on the license plate with, that said, I am jealous of myself. Uh -huh. um, a real, a QX4. Um, I had a, a, a Q45 with the word bow to the man on it, you know. Then I got the 400 SE Mercedes Benz and, um, you know, the Rolex watches, the jewelry, the women. So I know how that feel, you know, and I did that at a younger age. Now that I'm older, it's like, you know, sometimes you crave that. You you like, you know, I would love to see how the Bentley feel to drive. But then you say, well, okay, if you really believe in God, you really want to walk this walk, then you got to go with what he had planned. Was he's providing you with and be content with that. And that's where I'm at in my life. It's like, I am happy to be free. But people like you, you've been in prison. So it's like, when you come from that prison system where you don't have to toe the knife, you don't have to worry about your homeboys beefing with somebody behind a homosexual or behind a card game or buying some drugs that he can't right, pay exactly. for. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm at a place where, you know, hey, I can go to McDonald's. My favorite spot is Popeye's. I go hang in my Walmart. I don't have to worry about lockdown. I don't have to worry about feed up. They feed me when they want to feed me. I can eat what I want to eat, you know, and I can enjoy life. So I choose that over materialistic stuff any day. I got a good peace of mind. Uh, I'm learning this technology, like you say, this Instagram stuff. This stuff is crazy, man. Yo, it, it just, I be ready to go back to the Beepers, OG, you know, but. uh, You, you, you want to go back where? To the Beepers. The, the Page me, yeah. Page hey, look, man. See, even back in my days, man, like that's what we had. We had the the sky page, you know. Right yeah. now is even when we had the beeper back then, man. Like you know, you expecting a girl, somebody to call you, you will go to your phone and page yourself to see if it's working or whatever because you waiting for that call or whatever, man. So you're right. I can definitely, definitely understand about the page and the beep or whatever. But something that you touched on, man. And I think was huge, man. Whereas for us, like the materialistic things, like the infinities and the jewelry and the clothes, the woman, the house, you know, see, that's a lot of times what people get caught up into. Like right now, people watch like, you know, all these entertainers, like the rappers. You know what I'm saying? Like, they'll watch, like, this, you know, the, the basketball player. They watch the movie star. They watch all these folks. Like, even right now, people are factuated by power. They're fascinated by the show with ghosts. Right now, they look at ghosts in jail, not knowing and understanding that, guess what? When ghosts, when that show go off, guess what? Ghosts go home to his wife and his kid. Yeah. So ghost is not in jail. Like right now, at the end, they show ghosts in a graveyard. He's in a casket. But the difference is that show separate, you know what I'm saying, reality. You know what I'm saying? Facts from fiction. That's the difference. And once again, when you talk about you done been there. You done done that. And wait a minute. Hold up. It's a price to pay. And is it worth that price you paying? Like you had how many years of good time? 
Now you took my spending the rest of your life forever in a day in jail because what? I fell. I didn't want to be a tax player. I didn't want to do like everybody else did it. I want to be a people pleaser. Because once again, when you had all that stuff, was you pleasing you, Terrence Gangster William, or you were just doing it to please others so others can look at you like, yeah, I like what he got. I'll... That's what's different. People are, to me, as I'm looking at it, and I'm going to start using that terminology a lot. We as a society are big people pleasers. We worry about trying to please other people that in actuality, they don't give a damn about us, man. And we got to stop pleasing people. People go out the country and get their tummy tuck, get a, a boo job, you know what I'm saying? Get the big boob and get the big butt. For what? Love you. Bless what God bless you with, man. Learn how to love you. Yo, AOG, yo, you touched on something that and I be telling my mother and some of the people that I'm still in contact with my loved ones that uh, I'm a hardworking man and I'm a citizen and I'm a taxpayer now. I can honestly say that I have a a, a legit job. I really have a job, you know, right. and that stuff, it'd be exciting to go to work, get my little paycheck, you know. So at the end of the day, you know, um, I, you know, I'm excited. I take this and run with it. But now, uh, as far as the women, and uh, people who getting their bodies done. Uh, I I at one time I didn't like uh, a lot of fake stuff, but but I'm learning in this day and time that people are gonna do what they feel that they say that I'm doing this for me. But then you want to go out to the clubs, you want to you know be on the internet and things of that nature. So you're really doing it for someone else. To be accepted, and my my main thing I tell everybody is, I don't buy friendship. It's too expensive, you know. So you don't like how I look, you don't like me, and that's what it is. God made me like this, you know. But now we got to look at this too. For the ones who don't believe in religion, who don't believe in God, so now we have to say, okay, what do we do or what do we say to this person to build? his or her self-esteem up. Like, how do you get over to this person? Like, listen, you find like that, you that because now what happens is this. You can go get all these things done to you, but what about the side effect? What about when you get older? What happens then, you know? But, you know, some people will say, oh, he just hating it, they hate it. But, you know, we just voice in our opinion at the end of the day. But And I like I like the big buck girls. I like to watch that stuff, you know? You know, it's it's be you know it's real exciting, you know. But at the end of the day, that's as far as I'm gonna go, you know. Um, but I guess you know everybody feel like they're comfortable with getting this done, getting the nose done, getting you know whatever going to enhance their beauty, you know. And you know in Islam that's forbidden, you know. Even in Islam, we can't even draw a picture. We can't draw a picture because God gonna say you recreating His creation. He's gonna ask you to blow life into that on a day of judgment, you know. So a lot of things I, I try to stay away from, but you know, I, I'm just enjoying the view, man. You know, it's just beautiful right now, but just from the come from behind that wall, behind miserable men who want to fuss, want to be mad because you go into the commissary, jealous that you're going to visit. And that's another thing, that's a rule about a prison. Oh, gee, let me jump the subject right quick is you don't never tell nobody, oh man, my people come visit me tomorrow because now. They hoping you don't get that visit. You go get your hair cut, you get your clothes ironed up pretty good, you get fresh, and you sitting there waiting on a man to call your name, and they just stay there laughing. It's, yo, that has to be that. Yo, I ain't never had them problem. Let me put that on the record. My family been there for me my whole being. But I've seen a lot of miserable guys. I've seen guys don't give visit people lives. They're going to come visit these people, don't show up. And this is a bunch of miserable stuff in prison, man. And, but I always say this. Prison is an elementary, middle, junior high, high school, and a college. If you want to apply yourself, it's there for you. You know, you can get the knowledge. But if you want to hang out with your homeboy, tell war stories, go on the record and lie. I should tell my homeboys this. Be like, yo, man, why you don't hang out? I just been in the law library when they call the movie, we'll meet up. They come from the record yard. Why you don't come hang out on the record yard with us? I'm like, man, I got a life in 240 months, 20 years. We all in our early 20s. We haven't done that much in our life to be out here every day telling a story. You're going to start lying, and you're going to start believing that lie. 
You know what I'm saying? So that's when the problem occurs with people, you know, because people are lying and then they get it stuck in the head like that really happened and they'll take that stuff and run and beat you, get mad when you try to tell them, no, that's not what happened. That's not how it went, you know? But, you know, we have, you know, those situations where, you know, a lot of us want to enhance our beauty, though. Back to that subject, OG, I had to get that out. You know, we're jumping right now. But uh, I don't want to uh, bash the people about them getting themselves because I might have a woman that might, maybe I want to go look at the thing, uh, like, uh, you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> she would be saying, I remember you was on there with the OG, and you were talking about that. But like, hold up, don't hold that key. So <laughs> time out, y'all. OG said that, y'all. That won't be done. So. I'm just saying in general, the majority, not everybody, the majority, the majority, and I'm speaking for myself as well. It's uh -huh. right now. I'm not trying to. Jimmy, how you doing? How you doing? Everybody, thank you for joining us, man. Thank you for taking the time out of your day, joining me and Terrence Gangster William. Guys, listen, make sure you go subscribe to his YouTube channel. You know what? Better yet, what is your YouTube channel handle, man, so I can put it down and post it? Yeah, it's uh, Gangster G-A-N-G-S-T. Oh, let me get that. Hold up. Okay. Okay, hold up. Okay, Gangster. Which, hold up. The way you play it right here, right? Right, how you okay. spell it? That's first, gangster first. Then you put the little dash. The dash, okay. Right. Then you put D T H E. T H E. The yeah. original hot okay. boy. The original hot boys, okay. Hey, make sure gangster. Dash the original hot boys. That's it. Yeah, but now hold on. I got a my my a lot of my content right now is on my Instagram page. They gotta okay. go there first. So listen, so the difference right now, this is I'm gonna put YouTube, then I'm gonna put YouTube page, then I'm gonna put like I'm saying right now, where's your Instagram handle? Because once again, I want people to go there. Like I told you right now, was I came across his story through on uh, my buddy critique. And right now is, guess what? I found it was like amazing. Like, man, like, you know, listen to this brother, how humble and meek he was. And that's the difference. He wasn't trying to grandstand. He wasn't trying. No, he's like direct. And people do not understand that. That's what made me like, I love this brother, man. Because once again, just listen to the words that come out of your mouth, looking at you, seeing the sincerity, feeling the sincerity. That's what it's all about. And a lot of people don't do that. Somebody say all capital letters. I am subscribed. Okay, cool. I just put mm -hmm. that up. And what we're gonna do? Thank we're gonna, you. We're gonna put the IG handle now, man. Because once again, man, I want people to go out there. What's your IG handle? It's uh, it's all one word. Terrence Gangster Williams home. Okay, hold up. Ah, uh, you see that? How you got up on the screen? All that together. Cram all that okay. together and put H O M E at the end. Okay. Now, one thing you said, OG, while you're doing that, critique, a uh, good brother, he um he uh he turned me on to this other channel called uh, Patreon. Uh huh. You gotta post that too. That's where okay. my money gonna be at. Cause I might have to go get some stuff fish. Y'all gotta go to the dentist, get this grill out. I gotta go get it right. So y'all need to uh, subscribe to that channel to help me out. And what what is the Patreon page, man? The Patreon is man, I got some. I got what, what is the Patreon page? Uh oh, Terrence Gangster Williams. Okay, one word or just like how it goes? It's separated. Okay. How you got it up there, right. Terrence? It's, it's back to normal. Okay. Yeah, back to that again. Okay. That's on the Patreon page. You can subscribe, and I'm gonna have different interview, different stuff up there uh, for five dollars a month. They can get the $10 plan, the $20 plan. It's a lot of exclusive stuff going to be on there. Okay. So, guys, as y'all can see, I put it up there. YouTube page, Gangster Dash, the original Hot Boys. Right now, his IG, Terrence Gangster William Home. And right now is what I got is, as far as his Patreon page, underscore. And I'm saying Terrence Gangster William. Folks, listen, man, like you sit back and you think about it or whatever. Like I said right now, look what the brother say, man. Everything about right now is how 
This guy was a millionaire. This guy went from, you know, being part of the original member of all that stuff right now. What they was talking about, man, like, you know, I used to hate that song, man. What? You know, no, wait, wait, hold up. It was your it was, it was your brother, Burry, man, and Manny Fresh. I'm so fly. And then, oh, and then, yeah. And mama, you know, and then, 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 we put stuff in our mama name, our girlfriend name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't get me wrong. So, uh, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, don't get me wrong. You know, you could, but then again, it make a lot of sense. But, you know, when you constantly keep hearing it over and over and over, like, God, damn. No, nah, you just was used to that New York hip hop and this Southern okay. country boys in your ear, and you didn't want to hear that, OG. <laughs> and, and you know what? Listen, see, I'm going to accept it. You know what? You're probably right, man. Yeah, let's like, come on. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, because it took me a while to, like, with Lil Wayne. Like, even right now, with Juvie, for something about Juvie, it's like right now, it's like, you know, Juvie was like, I don't know. Like you gravitate, it's like right, like I, you know, it's certain things just hit you with the beat or whatever. You know, what I'm saying, period, and it's grab you in or whatever. So I just think of right now, man, with Manny Fresh and Bird, man, that I'm the fly, like man, that shit like had me like, you know, I, hey, look, man, I, oh man, man. <laughs> and so, so you ain't like that. Everybody get your roll on. I don't know how that goes. I don't even come on. I uh, forgot you, but I bet you know about some Arab and Rock Kim. Uh, <laughs> but I'm saying, uh, look, what? Don't get me wrong. Like I told you, it's like, I can, like my daughter tell you, I could put a CD in my car and listen to it over and over and over again. So I'm saying, I, I can admit, I'm simple Simon with certain things. Like even right now, when I put Little Wayne in there, and right now was, hey, Mr. Carter, I am him around the world. <laughs> look, 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 look. See, I get stuck. So I don't discriminate. If I like something, I'm going to keep playing it over. We, 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 we. Hey, yo. <laughs> hey, OG. Yo, uh, we, shout out to Lil Wayne, man. Yo, I fell in love with this album, The Funeral, man. He, he going hard on that album now. But uh, yo man, oh for everybody want to know, no, I never rap. Uh, I own the rep. Yo, let me tell you an interesting story, OG. I had went to uh Atlanta just to film my documentary, mm -hmm. and while I was there, this guy from Switzerland had contacted me through the uh, Instagram. Okay. And he sh he was like infatuated with New Orleans culture, so he had a lot of of our music from different artists on his shelves. The man pulled out three CDs. Uh, from my record label, because I started record label when I first got locked up, Shot Caller Records. And um, man, I had a CD put out, uh, Baby and Slim Cash Money, they paid for my CDs, my posters and all that stuff. And this guy showed me the CD, um, where that CD at? But he showed me the CD, OG, and I, it's right here. Wow. He showed me this CD right here. This CD right here is what I put out in 1999 when I first went to prison. Wow. It's, it still had the plastic on it. And inside the CD is a picture of me. I don't stop. Okay. I, yeah, it don't I, stop when a player get popped. Yeah, it don't stop. Wow. So I was letting them know, you locked me up, but I'm still going to get some money some kind of way. And I was like, yo. I said, hey, can you send me a copy of that? And he mailed it to me. When I got it, still had the plastic. It never been touched. We've never been open and played. So um, I was like, you know what? A lot of people haven't heard this, so I'm going to re uh, put this out. I'm trying to find an out outlet now. I might set this whole CD for $3. This is a classic here. This is something people going to want. This is something gangster put together from prison. You know, wow. something, you know what I'm saying, legal, you know. So, and I was listening to the music. It's some still some nice stuff, man, you know. I'm just trying to see where I'm going to put it at, man. So people need to hear my rappers back in the day. Then I got to catch up with my rappers. And we're going to go 50-50. I'm going to break them all off, you know. But I plan yeah. to put this CD out, man. This CD got, you see that little shot called the dollar sign, my little logo I had? Man, I did all this from prison. So I love money. And like I tell people now to this day, um, there are all kind of ways. Once I was in prison, OG, and I learned how to do the incorporations, and I learned about the small business loans, and I learned about a lot of stuff. I was like, man, loans, they print money. I'm going to get some money. Just put me out on the streets, you know. Um, OG, I wanted to come on so bad. I told the judge, I said, Your Honor, give me a lifetime supervision to show you 
that I'm really that I want to that I really want to change and I and I want to show the course that I've changed. He was like, whoa, he was shocked. He said, hold up. Cause I was doing hi, me and you talking, I had a little uh uh uh, uh, uh video zoom resentence. Mm -hmm. And um because he was doing the COVID era. And um he told me to step out with the probation officer say no because of my charge. It only carried five years to supervision. But he looked into it and he told me thank you for uh asking for that. I just that's how serious I wanted to get out here and I'm happy I'm out here because it feels good to be free, man. You know what? Even right now, like I said, let's dig deep in that because once again, people do not understand, like you say, doing 24 years in the P now, and people don't understand, like, you know, the important, you know, keeping in contact with the outside world. At least you had a support system. Right now, when I went away, you know what I'm saying? I, I went away at 17, and the support system I had was, you know, my mom, my pop. Um, my, 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 my brother, my sister, you know, family members or whatever. And a lot of people don't even get that. Even when I went away as a, you know, grown man, it's like right now I had, you know, married, had friends, family or whatever. I lost my mother when I was in there. And wow. you were, you're right, man. You see so much and you hear so much. And like the difference was like me being who I was, like when, even when I got out the first time, I used to go back and visit people that I met. I used to go back and get back because I know how it was, you know what I'm saying, and being there. So I know how it was to try to take care of people that was less fortunate. And the crazy part about it, I made it going to see people, going to visit people. I made it like a, a style, like it was cool, like it was part of the culture because that's the way you get back. But the difference is seeing your people, people you love and care about in bondage. People don't understand that, man. And not only that, especially from a psychological standpoint, doing time. Right now, out of 15 years that I did, guess what? I spent probably six, seven in, in a hole, in a box. And people don't understand, like, the psychological effect on you that it had. It's like right now, like, you in there sometime locked down 23, 24 hours a day, man. And people don't understand, like, what you going to do? You get a good book, you read that book so fast, you know, and you hate it when that book is about to come to end because, oh, man, now you got to find another one. And it's, a, it's, it's amazing how we start using this. Like even right now is you still was conducting business. You still didn't let that dream. You didn't let your dream die. So that's what I'm saying right now is that's why, like I told you, to me, even when we was talking today, I said, man, how the heck, how long you been on? Six months. You know how to operate this tech stuff? Because when we was going back and forth and we trying to talk about how to do this, how to do this, to make this happen, and you just like, ah, 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 ah. I'd have been over there like scooby dooby doo Ooh. <laughs> Look, OG, listen, though. Let me tell you something. When I first got the cell phone, I was like, what the word? No, let me back up. When I first got out of prison, they just kicked me straight out, go to this bus station, this girl standing up. So I'm looking around. I see a paper on her. I'm like, okay. But she talking and she looking at someone. And they talking back to her. And I'm like, I say, excuse me, that person can see you. You can. So she looked at me like I was an alien or something. I was like, well, <laughs> yeah. you know, I just did 23 years and 10 months in prison. And I didn't, I didn't, there are all cell phones in prison. I stayed away from that. Mm -hmm. Because I didn't, I, I, in my mind, because I stayed in the law library a lot. And I, and I always get the law. When laws come out and stuff, I always watch the news and things of that nature. So I see where, what they were doing was, okay, yeah, we kept our foot on you all neck with the crack and giving a lot of you blacks a lot of time. So now we're going we're gonna to pass this law. However, it's the judge's discretion to let you out. So what we to, so for the people who are ignorant of the law, and when I use the word ignorant, it's not a bad thing. It's just you don't know about the law. Um, for our family members and people on the street who don't really know about the law, first they think, oh, uh, 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 oh, President Obama did this, passed this law, or President uh, 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 Joe Biden passed this law. Okay, yeah, they passed the law, but then they put it in the court's hand. So now the judge could come and say, well, yeah, I gave you too much time. Back in the day, I was bound by the guidelines. But now the guidelines are advisory. However, because you got that write-up for drinking alcohol, you got that write-up for having a weapon on you, or you got that write-up for fighting, I'm going to deny your motion. So keep that life sentence. You know what I'm saying? So in my mind, I was like, you know what? If you really saying you want to change, here's what come with that. Because, you know, and then you got to keep in mind in prison, people still used to watch me because of who my family are. And I still was doing interviews and reaching out. So they watched me with the magnifying glass. So like prime example, like, you know, Muslim birthday and person say, 
oh, you a Muslim, you supposed to be doing that. People know our dean better than us. And I'd be like, well, how you know about that? Well, how you, well, I know. I'd be like, well, why you ain't take Shahada? Why you become Muslim? Uh uh-uh, that's too hard. I don't want to pray five times a day. I love my pork, you know what I'm saying? So, and I knew people were watching me too, but, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm human. And at first of all, let me say this too. I'm not a role model. Please don't look at me like a role model. Uh, you know, I, I still make mistakes. Um, I still, you know, like to watch different women, you know, um, for the women who watch it now, I don't um, mess with married women. I don't mess around with a woman I know that's in a relationship with a man. And, um, you know, I just don't cry. I never did that when I was on the street. I never did it when I was in prison. Like if a woman say, call me, hey, you got a, you got a husband? Uh, yeah, but he don't be here. To, well, I'm not calling you. Or uh, you, you got a boyfriend? Y'all live together? I'm not calling you because I'm not going to never let a woman come between me and a man. You know, there's too much women out there, you know. And um, so I just don't do that kind of stuff, OG. But in prison, you know, I wanted to get myself together. And I, like I say, it just was things that I started changing with myself. And, and the first thing I did, I tried it, it didn't work. But then years later, I was able to conquer it was I had a homeboy uh, from Slidell. We just called him Grill because he had the top and gold grill in his mouth. And I was like, man, you said such and such. I thought he had cussed. He's like, man, I don't say, I don't cuss. I'm like, boy, every black boy in the ghetto go in his mouth cuss. You, you did cuss. And I'm thinking the man cuss, right? So I started paying attention and he never said a cuss word. So it was like, it's like in the early 2000s, like come 2005, once I, because I took you out in 95, but I never studied Islam. But in, then I started going to nation Islam and, you know, just, uh, it was this woman, oh, I never told him about this too. It was this woman, uh, she was uh, at the drug program and she was a Jehovah Witness. She was a nice, fine woman. So I was like, well, maybe if I join a Jehovah Witness, you know, I'll be her brother under the faith. She might, you know. So that lady would give me all kind of panelists and stuff to read. I would learn about Jehovah Witness, but I ain't never get a hug or a kiss or like that, but I had learned. So now when I started doing studying different religions, so if I come across someone, instead of being disrespectful, we can sit down and talk respectfully. And, um, you know, but when I took Shahada to become a uh, Sunni Muslim, I, one of the things I wanted to do was, can you see God? Somebody put something, do anything. I can, you read that. You got the glass, OG. Uh, oh, hey. you know it's a gangster got the charisma to do anything he want. Thank you. Whoever that is, thank you. Uh, but OG, yeah, so I was like, I don't want to cuss no more, and I don't want to use the N-word no more. So I just started doing it, going, going. As I read the book, the cuss word, I skip over, you know, keep going. And it just became, uh, you know, second nature to me. And like a lot of people will say, you know, when you cuss, because it's, you know, people cuss every, in every sentence, every other word is a cuss word. And in and, and the old time, it's like, you know, when a person do that, I mean, their bo- vocabulary is very short, you know? Mm-hmm. And, um, but I don't stop nobody from cussing because, you know, I come from that. I used to cuss like I said, I had a filthy mouth, OG. So at the end of the day, I, that's, you know, that's where I come from. But this is something I wanted to do. This is something I want to do to better myself, you know. And I find people sometimes try to watch how they talk around. Like, oh, man, you know, be you. Don't, don't try to do because I'm doing that. You know, that's just something I wanted to do, you know. But uh, go ahead, OG. You, you know what? Even right now, when it came down to fanity, and don't get me wrong, like to me, like I know, like if I get pissed off, you, I, you, 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 you see, and that's the difference. He or she who anger us control us. So it's like sometimes when we lose it and we allow our emotion to supersede our intellect, then we don't care. So to me, I already know I got a short fuse. So what I try to do is being that I know I got short fuse, how do I make sure I maintain control from the beginning to the middle to the end? And reason, like, you know, to me, like, if I get into a hold up, I try to walk away. I try, you know what? My bad. You know what? Because it's not worth it. So I know, like, I can use profanity when I get upset because now what's next? I I, I don't care. So you're right by restraining from that. And especially even on social media, whereas you watch some of these guys get up on these social media platform, yelling, screaming, belittling each other and doing all this other stuff right there. I got the first opportunity when I was trying to get my story out there. It was a guy from the UK. Shout out to Infomind. 
he did my documentary and he put it out there. And that was like a few years ago. And some of the things that he was telling me, like, you know, to stay away from profanity, because sometimes YouTube or whatever, they would gag you or they would blacklist you and all this other stuff. So with that being said, I always kept that in the back of my mind. So even now, what I try to do, I try to watch out and stay away from that profanity. And that's hard. But once again, you're right. A lot of times when people use profanity, that means their vocabulary is what? They don't have much in their vocabulary. And to me, take your time. You know what? Take your time. And that's what, like you say, using profanity, using the N-word. Come on, man. We are better than that. We are yeah. way better than that. Because you know what I learned? Uh, shout out to Tony Snow. I see you on here. Um, OG, what I learned that a lot of us get upset when another... Uh, nationality call us the n-word but you got to keep in mind when they hear you use that to your homeboy and i know a lot of us say oh that's just a term of endearment or that's something we say amongst the homies people still watch that so they're gonna feel like okay if you call yourself that then i'm gonna call you that you know so it's just certain things like now like i get upset you know um and like with the social media man i get so much disrespectful stuff cussing but to me, OG, it don't, I don't get upset because I know what I signed up for. You know, so I don't mind a person vent or a person, how they say, troll me or do whatever because they help me at the end of the day because they give me content, give me something to talk about, give me something, to, you know, to keep going. Because now I can reach out to the at-risk youth or reach out to someone and say, hey, you see what I'm going through, you see. Because, you know, a lot of people can't handle um, the ridicule, the stuff that I go through, you know. And like I say, um, don't have no pity party for me. Keep them coming. Keep cussing me because I was once a person in the streets. I made rules. I broke rules. I was what you call a gangster in New Orleans, you know. And now I'm an old man sitting on the couch right now, you know, with back problems and things of that nature. But I'm enjoying life right now. I'm free. But, uh, yo, OG, I get so much stuff, man. The stuff I get in my uh, Instagram, a person would have been deleted or been gave up. Man, I get a lot of disrespectful stuff. You, you sit back and think about it, man. You done seen it from both sides, man. Yeah. Like I say, you know how to dish it. You know how to receive it. And you know how yeah. to deal with it accordingly, man. And like I told you right now, man, like, you know what? Like, to me, even right now, like I always try to tell people right now, what changed me, honestly speaking, is being incarcerated and when my mother died. And right now, it's like, folks, people do not understand. I was out there, you know, basically right now, putting in work. You know, right now, whereas if somebody did something to violate me or my people or whatever, we took care of business, killing people directly, indirectly, poisoning our community, doing all the devious and the devil work, you know. So to me, it was nothing. But when I got that, got, got a chance to make that phone call from the hole on February 9th, 1992, 2992, when I got that call, it was a Sunday. And I got a chance that evening to make that call. And right now, when I heard that my mom's was gone, oh, man, brother. <laughs> oh, man. That type of pain, you don't wish on your worst enemy under any circumstance. And when you sit back and you think about that, sometime in order to change, you have to be able to put your foot in somebody else's shoes and understand. You know, and, and, to, and to me right now is probably... And as I look at it, man, you know, that year, that month, you know, a few weeks later, I had to get sent this. And I, I, I got sent this. And when I got sent this, I can remember being in the Eastern District, you know what I'm saying? Eastern District of New York, you know, uh, of the United States versus Ryan Glaze Gibbs. And, and in front of the judge, before he handed down the sentence, I told him, I can't blame Lorenzo Fat Cat Nichols, Howard Pappy Mason. I can't blame nobody for what I did. I Everything I did, I did it because that's what I want to do. And the difference is it took the death of my mom to make me to understand the pain and suffering that I inflicted upon the victim and the victim family. And with that type of pain, I don't wish upon my worst enemy. So it, even with that, I was just being real. I, you know, I was expressing myself. And to me... That felt good because it was true. Hey, OG, let me say this here. And because you mentioned about your mother, right? And I know it's coming one day, but when Katrina hit me, I was in USP McQuarrie 
all the phones out. The, the last I had, man, I, was, I, I literally cried. My brother was coming to me, man, it's a test from my law. You got to be patient with it. And I just, I, I, my faith wasn't strong then. And I was like, man, that's my, you only get one mother, you know? So I was like, the story I had got from my baby mother, she was like, well, the last I talked to your mother, she said the water was rising in the house and your grandfather didn't want to leave. And your mother said she don't want to leave her father. So in my mind, I'm like, my mother died a soldier. She stayed with her father. But I'm like, yo, this man, yo, I was told. So, and my mother been there for me from juvenile to state to the fed, you know. And uh, but I would disagree with you with this, OG. And I and I always, cause I heard uh Toya or Lil Wayne be mother say this one time too. Is uh because people always say, well, gangster man, you think too much. You think uh and, and you think too much into things. Um she had made a mistake, she had wound up going to jail. She was like, Oh, that was horrible. I don't wish jail on my worst enemy. Well, let me say this. Those things you just named, even prison, I wish that on my worst enemy, but it's fact. But number one, you're my enemy. And when you're my enemy, you want me dead, you hate me, you can't stand me. So I know in prison, if you don't get no visits, you don't have no money, you're miserable. So I want my enemy miserable. Because I always tell people this. I say, man, you know what, man? I say, man, when I get out of jail, man, I don't want to kill nobody. No more. I don't want to kill my enemy. And they do guys look at it. I say, because think about it. When you kill your enemy, it's always no more. It's over with. Ain't nothing else to go through. But if your enemy in jail, going through this pain and suffering, now you satisfied. Because I know my enemy right now. Because man, I've seen plenty of guys turn over their manhood. <laughs> I mean, do things strange change. I've seen plenty of times that child go up under that door, and I didn't seen a lot of stuff in prison, man. So I'd be like, I want my enemy in jail. I don't want him dead. I want him so. You know what I'm saying? But you know, everybody got their own way, and I understand that you all use that as a term to explain how. Bad a situation is, but I don't like them terminology. I want my enemy to suffer because okay. you're my enemy because you want me to suffer. Mm -hmm. and, and some people say, Well, that ain't right. Well, you're my enemy because if we enemy, we don't like each other. There's like countries, United States going to war with somebody else. They hate us, we hate them. Let's get it. Let's walk. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but uh, OG, at the end of the day, you know, I just, I just be like, when it comes to that word, that enemy word, OG. I don't take it lightly because I know your enemy will try to destroy your family. They'll take it out on innocent family members, you know, because they figure this is how I'm going to have him suffer. I'm going to make him cry this way, you know, and that's a sick mindset people had. But guess what? When I was on the street, OG, my mother called me and she said, Terrence, I said, what's up, mom? She said, somebody ever kidnapped me, don't come. I'm like, mom, what you talking about? She said, well, that's Val. Shout out, Vail. I see you. That's Vail. Yeah, I can't Val, see right now. This man okay. is brilliant. Shot called record. And you know what I'm going to tell you to do, man? Do like I do, man. See, go to, you can go anywhere. The Walmart. The, I got really, a pair. Go to, go to Dollar. Because I got a couple of pair of regular glasses uh -huh. that I don't really wear because I'm afraid because it's going to break. I go to work or whatever. So I got readers. Because once again, man, like to me, like, listen, man. I'm 91 and a half years old, man. I tell these guys all the time. So look, hey brother, look, you be like this, man. Like you be like this, like hey, wait. Oh, gee, I got a pair of glasses, but the, let me tell you what them glasses they do. I bought them from Walmart, right? One day, I just got some. I need some glasses to read, but it hurt. It give me a headache. It hurts my eyes. So the strength right now for readers, I go no higher than 2.0. 2.0. You know, so the difference is what you got to do when you're in there. Go to Dollar Tree, go to Family Dollar, whatever. Dollar Tree, if they got one, is cheaper there. So right now is I test them, 1, 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, 2.5, and they'll tell you. So 2.0 is about average for me. So to me, and I, like I told you right now, I get like probably six, seven pairs because I'm going to break them, I'm going to misplace them, <laughs> I'm going to do that, man. Yeah. So yeah. something, you know what, something that I heard, man, like, you know, an interview that you did and you were speaking about, um, I got, I, I guess the guy name was Slim and I guess he used to cut your hair. And right now is like every time before you leave, he, he used to cut your hair. And I guess he was a rapper. He was into the music game. But every time he used to cut your hair, guess what? 
before you leave, you check you to make sure you didn't take the tape or whatever, you know? I thought that was unique. I thought that was different. And I can remember if somebody get in your car, what are they going to do? They're going to take Steal your, your CD. Yeah. Take your, your, your shades. Yeah. Oh, you talking about you talking about the guy named uh people know him over the world as Soldier Slim. He was signing no living records, but we know him as Mac Know You Slim. Um, a lot of people you hear a lot of people from New Orleans, especially our area, uh, area uh, will refer him as our Tupac, you know, because he was that talent. The guy I'm talking about had a lot of talent, man, and he out the project. You know, we from the same project, and um, yeah, he he rap real good. So I used to always want to be the first one with something from him. So when I go to his house, he cut my hair. If I see a tape laying on his dresser, I'm a he had cool water too. I would get a little cool water, spray that on me, and I'm gonna steal one of them tape, but he caught on. So he'd be like, come here. And he'll pat me down, make sure I ain't steal the tape before I leave because he always had something raw. He'd be in the studio, you know, back then in the take cassettes. You know, you know, I'll try to steal the tape to go back, you know, come out so I could be bumping his music. Where you get that from? Yeah, I'm from with this. You know how you want your little bragging rights back then. But yeah, I was speaking about Mac, you know, you slim, man. Um brother that was killed in front of his mother house okay and you know what you sit back and think about it man like look at y'all guys man y'all guys man from you know shout out to new orleans louisiana right now i, I remember the katrina situation i'm glad your you know your moms your grandpa and your family's all right because a lot of people left and they start going to different places some of them still never came back man and w when you sit back and you think about it like the talent all the talent and not only that, man, like you look at it, like y'all guys was in that close area. And look how y'all was able to have so many talented people that came for them. Like, you know, you got y'all guys, you know, with you, your brother, baby, you know what I'm saying? Or your, uh, 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 um, like that little Wayne and Juvie and all that. And then you got Master P. All y'all guys came from that same community and y'all all was able to be successful. And to me, that's huge. I don't care what anybody say, because once again, that's what it's all about, man. It's not how we start, it's how we finish. How we able to put our difference to the side. And you know what? We, we, we wish each other well. Because even right now, with, if I'm not mistaken, with Slim right now, is, did he have anything to do with or he was part of the C-Murder case or something? I don't know. No. No, yeah. he, he uh, I think Slim yeah, Slim was killed before C-Murder case. I, I okay. want. No, I, I think C-Murder was in prison. I'm not sure. But uh, no, he had nothing to do with that situation. Okay, yeah. so you know, but but just like I said right now, man, like what I look at it, and that's what I'm trying to tell you. People don't understand, man. Like talent is everywhere, man. And to yeah. me, what we have to start looking at our kids, like you know, you know, you gotta look at these kids as our prince and our princess, our queens and our kings, because that's what we are. Even when you say something right now, early in the interview about being these guys being in the yard, and what you decide to do now, I'm gonna be in the law library. Because once again, like I say, here it is, man. I don't care what anybody say. They gave me a life sentence. Plus what, 240 years? But it, it, see, look what happened. Man say that. I remember man say when I got picked up. When I got picked up on November 10th, 1988, mm. they slapped three sets of handcuffs on me. I was on the run. They slapped three sets of handcuffs on me. And you know what they told me? I would never see the street as a free man again. And see, people don't understand. That's what man say. That ain't what God say. The difference is right now is sometimes people got to understand, like with that song Marvin Sapp say, he saw the best in me. When everyone else only saw, saw the worst. You know, so to me, the difference, why I was spared being in shootout. And like I told you, I'm not, don't get me wrong. If you got me, I'm holding that. I'm, I'm going to be like Ricochet Rabbit. But the difference, you watch how many people we lost into that street life. You know, yeah. saying to a violent death, and like even when I would I get or to the to the penitentiary, even when I tell my guys, you know my my guys I work, I be telling right now was how many people want to be at work? I never want to be at work, but let me let you in a secret. I'd rather be at work than be in the penitentiary. I'd rather be at work than be in a graveyard at an early age of a violent death. I'd rather be at work than being homeless. Work than being hungry. We all got choices. So once again, like I said right now, was when you sit back and you think about it, look at the young boy, young thug, gunner. I said right now, I ask you these guys, one is worth eight million, one is worth four million. Mm. We want a great place with them now. Everybody know, regardless. So it's not what we do, man. It's how we do it. And that's why I said right now, man, like to you, what you doing, 
And what you're seeking to do, like I said right now, I got 60 plus people on my platform as far as YouTube. I got almost 15,000 on my IG. I got 5,000 on Facebook. I got other things I got going on. And me, to you, whatever I can do to help you with your cause and help you in your vest and help you put your story out there, guess what? It is done. Thank you. I need that. I need all the help I can get. Come on, bro. Because yeah. once again, it's you. Like I said right now, the charisma, the attitude, nothing arrogant, nothing cocky. Nothing. Come on. It's like, look how we talking. We talking to each other from day one, like we knew each other forever. You know, a lot of people always say that I was a people. That's like in prison. I was able to stop a lot of the, the uh, violence and fights because I know sometimes it takes a man to apologize. Just because you go and tell the person, oh, man, I apologize my bad. I was wrong. You're not a coward. You're not a chump. You're just acknowledging you're wrong. But you know what you would do if a, if it come down to that. But sometimes you got to, you know, say and learn how to defuse the situation. And I've always been good with that. And. And I've always been a small guy, too, because people hear my name all over the city, gangster this, gangster that. So when guys see me like, man, you little gangster, you the one? I'd be like, yeah. You know, I was a little small and stuff, and they looking at me like, I'm thinking I'm going to see this big old black gorilla, this big guy, and you little. Like, yeah, that's me. And like Chucky, the little dog Chucky, you know. But, you know, OG, uh, and like I said, I've been through all that. Like right now, I have a son, my youngest son out of my five boys, my youngest son, my baby boy, is in federal prison now. On a, on a conspiracy a RICO act, uh, charged with two murders, and you know I talk to him every day, you know, and he tricked me. He used to be like, "Dad, all I do is because he was real good on the dirt bikes. He loved to ride them dirt bikes, but he tricked me. He's like, Dad, I ain't doing that. I don't be doing nothing." And all the while he was beefing with the same project I was beefing with, the Calio project, you know. And it's like a repeated cycle. It's constantly each generation, next man up next. And at some point we have to break this, you know, and because it's behind ignorance. Oh, me and my dad and your daddy was beating so now it's me and your turn. You know, like, for what? You know what I'm saying? But it, it, it starts here with me, you know, because at the end of the day, I have to let them youngsters know, like, we was beating behind stupid, petty stuff. Who going to name going to ring the most uptown, you know, or whatever the case may be. So at the end of the day, man, I just appreciate you for letting me come on your platform and tell my story and talk to the people, you know, because um, a lot of people uh, think, like, Okay, now he home now. I know he in a big mansion. He riding the Rolls Royce, the Benz. No, but I don't crave those things, you know, because like I say, I would like to see him or whatever the case may be. But this is what God had planned for me, and this is what I that I'm I'm going to accept because before I got out of prison, I said, God, if you please let me out. Whatever you give me, I'm gonna be happy with and content with, and, and that's what it is. So once them people say, let me tell you something, OG. When a judge reduced my sentence. He gave the prosecutor 30 days to find the victim's family. Because I was I was enhanced for two murders, OG. I was never charged or indicted for. The judge said, by the preponderance of the evidence, I feel like you did those murders. I just feel life. That's why I got a life. I got two PSI, OG. I was charged with an 848 continuing criminal enterprise. I had that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I was one of the youngest ones to be charged that kingpin status. And yet... It was behind murders and behind them want me to get them information on cash money records. So now what they did, a young boy, ignorant to the law, don't know no better. I had a lawyer, get my attorney told me, he said, well, when I go have dinner tonight with the prosecutor, I'll run that by her. So I was like, yo, these people go eat together. So they just play with our life like this, you know. But it took me to get in prison. And what really, what really shocked me at the end when that judge took the life sentence and, 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 and 240 months off me. And said 27 and a half years, but hold up to 30 more days. Now, prosecutor, you go find a victim family and give me a statement from them, and we're gonna go from there because the prosecutor wanted me with 40 years. So I was like, Yeah, I done did half of my life in prison. The prosecutor wanted me to do some more time. Come on now. So I had to literally wait 30 more days for my sentence to become final. But at that time, I'm just I'm going to just about everybody on the compound. Hey, how much time you got? I'm doing the calculate because I got a life, so on life we don't get good time. But I know when, when, once they kick my time, it's going to all come in then. So I'm, I'm like, I go to, the, to this guy at the mail room. I say, hey, man. Yeah, he said, you'll be getting out soon, we, because everybody on the compound knew me. I was like, yeah, man. He's like, August this year. I was like, no, 
I don't get none. He said, well, man, the way I did the math, you don't get out to August. And mind you, it's like December, January somewhere. So I was like, man, you got your you – no, know, it's December. I said, man, something ain't right now. So now I'm running everybody like, man, be cool. You're going to go. you trip. You So I had uh, went to his – I waited till after Christmas. I waited till all the holiday was over. I waited till New Year's, everything. I went to the mail room, to the R&D, the records. I said, I want to talk to him again. So I went to uh, – he said, well, man, I talked to the people in Grand Prairie, and they said, this is how you calculate your, calculate your time. I said, well, man, I would have pulled out a paper. I said, well, this, he said, oh, me and your math is different. I said, well, man, math the same around the United States. Me and our math different. <laughs> nah, for real. So look, OG, look what I tell him. I said, listen, man, because I had my lawyer send me a copy of my German commitment because I know how the course take a while and I know how the prisoner take a day time to get it. So I had him to mail it to me and I went short. He got my paperwork. I said, can you please fax it to Grand Prairie so they can calculate, recalculate my time? He said, give it up. He went in there. So I walk off with, with a guy uh, named Baby from Pensacola, Florida. We going back to the U.N. I said, man, that man ain't going to send that stuff to them people. I just got to wait till, you know, the, the uh, regular business hours open back up after the New Year's. And um, it was it was January the 3rd, actually. So uh, I go to my unit. Me and him go to my cell. We talking for about 30 minutes. I said, man, I'm going to get in the shower. So I go jump in the shower. OG, while I'm in the shower, because I had to get in the hot water, the water soup and things, I didn't even much bathe yet. I hear my counselor, Terrence Williams, yeah, what's up? Get your stuff. I'm like, man, why, why I ain't got time for you right now. He said, you leave. Oh, I jumped out. Yo, I didn't bathe or nothing. I jumped out that shower. Let's go. Everybody in the dorm was clapping for him, was happy, you know, because I had this class I had started. It was called I Can, uh, Go Home a Better Man. And um, I had put a curriculum together to help a lot of people that was going home, you know. And um, I would deal with a lot of different individuals, you know. So, uh, you know, the people let me up out of there, man. I was so happy, man. I got off the bus. They put me. I got off the bus, and in Pensacola, I was in the neighborhood. I didn't know where I was at. I called my mother. They came, drove from New Orleans to pick me up in Pensacola. I was cold. I had my little bag sitting on on the ground, man. But I was just so happy to be out of prison, man. And the first for people who want to know, the first thing I ate was at the Waffle House. I remember that now. You ate what? Oh, uh, at the Waffle House, I had grist eggs and um grilled chicken. Yeah, me and my mother and my one of my brothers, my youngest brother Shedrick and his wife, uh, we went to the Waffle House, and um, cause I had called my mother, my mother called my brother, come on, we gotta go get my baby. I'm the, I'm my mother's middle child, but I'm her baby. Yeah, so uh, man, I was cold too. I was I was nervous, OG, cause I got off this bus and I literally walked to this gas station. I saw this guy in the truck. I said, Hey man, can I use the phone? Like, uh -uh, uh -uh. And I was like, I understood it, cause you know people play game, rob people, do all that. So he. He, I was shivering. He saw me, so he felt. I guess he felt bad. He pulled around. He said, hey. "He said here. He said, uh, put. It was a pack he gave me to keep your hands warm and something to put on your body to keep your body. Cause I had a short sleeve. I had a t-shirt on. Whoa. Yeah, he gave me that, and um, I was like, man, thank you. I appreciate it. And he, I, I, I said, that's my stuff right there. I showed him my bag. I had my Quran in there, my prayer rug, and some of my mail and, and my business plan. My, some of my stuff I took home with me. So he was like, um, man, what's the number? So I gave him my mother number, and uh, he told him what gas station I was at. So behind the gas station was a little ghetto with a hood. I never told him about this story. Oh, Jesus, my first time I tell this story. So uh, it was a little hood behind me, right? So I'm looking at this dog back. I can see this. I'm like, man, I used to rob and jack people. But I hope I don't. I don't got nothing, but I know a person to get mad and still shoot you if you don't have. You know, so I'm like, man, I just got out of jail. I hope I keep looking back, and I'm looking on the highway. So I walk across the street. Called the house, man, it's cold out. So, man, my mother and brother finally put up in the truck. I was so happy, man. Hugged my mom, and um, I said, I'm home. So we stopped and went to the Waffle House. The first thing I ate was at the Waffle House. I would love to have Popeye chicken or gumbo I, I, I having some Waffle you, House. Hey, I heard you say that all the time. You know what? But something that you say, man, I can become a better man. What, say that again. That was powerful, man. Um, the, It was called I Can. The program was called I Can. And um, I had the little slogan, I, I could go home and become a better man. And I had put a little curriculum together. Um, for It was for every, anybody who wanted to uh, come to the thing, right? So you had a few guys coming in. I was helping them. You know, I had help. I had other help, too. It wasn't okay. just by myself. Let me say that. Um, but he, he, even for the fact that, look at you, man. Like, you was always trying to get back. You always trying to help. Even right now, I'm watching. Shout out to Dr. Alyssa World. Dr. Alyssa, her world. And BGG coming soon. Right now, we see that's one of the things about it being surrounded with powerful, good people. And to me, right now, was I just, you know, right now, this is a childhood friend that, you know, she's a doctor now. 
And basically right now is we're going to be doing certain things together. And I, and I may mention of you because, once again, it's about powerful people, bringing them together, networking or whatever, talking about some of the mental health issues and everything else. Because a lot of times people want to sweep things under the rug. So once again, anybody that's out there, make sure you subscribe to Dr. Alyssa World. We got a lot of powerful stuff coming on, man. But like I told you, bro, what, what I love and what I see you. The difference is right now is like, like to me, you always was like got that big heart. You always was that giver. You always find way to help other people. See, okay, let me rephrase that. If you love and care about something, you always find a way to help them. But I, see, right now is I, I, I'm glad. I, hey, hey, look, right now I'm glad I wasn't your enemy, man. I wouldn't want to be your enemy, man. Hey, OG, man, let me tell you something. First of all, shout out to Queen France. Because she has helped me out a lot with this technology too. Man, I call her all the time. Hey, how you? She was telling me how to uh, tag somebody. I don't. How you? At, girl, what you pray to about the three dot? This sometimes this stuff drives me crazy, man. But I enjoy it because it keeps me out of trouble. Keeps me, you know, it keeps me busy. Keeps me going. You no, know, but uh, I, you know, I got a, I got a also too a nine private organization called Hug the Block. Um, that I got a curriculum for that too. Um, pretty good thing that I'm gonna be doing. Once I get my documentary, I'll get everything that I'm doing. Um, I, I plan to uh, put that together because uh, I got a lot of things lined up, too, that I plan to do that I, I got to stay focused, you know, because my circle is small. There's only one person I hang out with, um, my, uh, my people from uh, the project, Sweet Pea. Um, but I don't hang out with nobody. I don't go to clubs. I don't drink. I don't smoke, you know. So I just be in here thinking of how I'm going to get me some money legally. And how I'm going to uh, uh, pursue these uh, 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 different little things that I had that I want to put out. Um, Sweepy over there, shout about Y'all want to see Sweepy? Sweepy 6'3. All he want to do is sleep all day. He like to work. Sweepy, come sit. Let yeah, the people see. Oh, he say he like to beat people up, y'all. So I got a oh, bodyguard. So you got a bodyguard. Come let the people see man. you, man. You got a bodyguard, oh, yo. man. And he's not a cook too, OG. He be cooking oh, red man. bean, come butter bean. Come let the people see you, man. Come let the people see you. Hey, yo. Yo. Sweet Pea know how to cook red beans, so if there's any oh, women man. out there want a man that know how to cook, he know how to cook. Let him see. Come over, son. Come over, son, sweet. This is my best. This is my, my neighbor out my project. Up, man? Sweet Pea. Sweet Pea. Yeah. What's sweet up with pea, love? Man. What's good? What's good, bro? How you doing, man? I'll run hey. with my big bro, man. Hey, listen. Hey, that's what's that's what's about, man. Man. That's Let me tell you something, about. OG. Let me tell you something about him. He used to live next door to me in the Magnolia Project on 2807 Willow Street. Your apartment was A, right? He A, I'm B. Me and his mother is real tight. He lost his younger brother to the streets. One of his other brothers had gone out of jail, swallowed some drugs, died at the house. One of his, one, his little sister died. Uh, one of his other brothers in Angola with a murder charge. So when he found out, I was only reached out to me. I said, listen, man, if you really want to change your life, there are a lot of job opportunities out here where I'm at. I don't take care of a grown man. Cause I'm, I'm out here by myself. I don't know nobody in the city. I'm, I'm solo, but my door open to you. I said, you want to come down here, get your life together, man? I'm willing to help. God bless the man to get him a job. He's been working. We both go to work together. And man, it's been all good, man. He comes straight where I come from, the ghetto of the hood, but he wanted to leave it. And I was like, well, come on. I couldn't turn my back. I couldn't tell him no. But you know, by me being on supervised release, I got to get permission from my PO. Mm -hmm. I explained to my PO, hey man, this is a guy I come from where I come from. The man want to change. And my PO met him, let him know the rules, and man, it's been all good, you know. So that's the only person I hang out with, and we go to work, come on home. And, and you know what? Look at that, man. Like I say right now, bro. Like even right now, when it got close for me to come home, when I knew I was coming home for the first time in my life, and right now, Tony Snow put up because I put up Queen Fran. I put up Queen Fran, so he correct me. It's Queen France, Uncle Glaze. You know, so yeah, yeah, yeah. She got a uh, she got an Instagram or YouTube too. Is she got official Queen France, and she got she got Queen France agency too. OG, she been a real big help for me on this journey, man. She OG, let me tell you something. When I come home, was like, did I cut you off or something? Was you in the middle of something? Good, good, good. I'm typing. Uh, when I come home, OG. I had played on YouTube one time. Then she reached out uh, through one of my Muslim brothers from Baltimore, and she said, uh, 
tell Terrence, stay off that uh YouTube, stop do uh doing that stuff for free, I get him paid. So I was like, Yeah, all right. She got my first uh gig with Vlad. And uh then she was like, Man, you know, the world wanna hear a story. I said, people don't want to hear from me. I said, man, I'm from the hood. It's the same old stuff in every ghetto. You know, she was like, no, man, you got a unique situation, story. So I was like, yeah, all right. So she was like, you know, I'm going to show you that I believe in you. You say you want to change, you want to do right. The girl put half of her own money up for the film, my documentary, man. Wow. You know, so I was like, whoa. So I reached out to Slim, my brother Slim, who owned Cam and Rick. He gave me money to do my documentary. And she put her own money up. And man. She been really helping me out, man. You know, a lot of temptation been going on with that girl. She's real beautiful and thick too, man. You know, but uh, but, but look hey, what you're saying. Like, you see, that's the different, man. Like I told you, it's people out there that want to help. Like, look at you right now, man. You reach out to your man. Come out here with me. You set it up. See, that's what it's all about, man. So to me, that's what make you blessed because you know how to bring good people. You know how to right now help good people. As I was saying right now, bro, when I got close to coming home. For the first time in my life, I was scared to death. You know why I was scared to death? Because once again, if somebody break into my house, if somebody do something to me and my family, before I get my vest, I get my joint, I'm going to take care of business. Now, it's like if somebody do something to me and my family or whatever, I got to pick up the phone like everybody else and call Popo. So that's the first, I'm like, whoa, because my whole mindset, have changed my whole thinking have changed and people don't understand that man See, in order to change change comes from fame and like i said when i heard you say look man they gave me 45 to 90 days to survive before i go back to jail they say you'll be back in 45 to 90 days once again that's what man say i told these people well i got i was on 10 years supervised release so right now i told these people i don't care if I got to go from garbage can to garbage can to garbage can, collecting aluminum cans, I'm not going back. And I mean that from the bottom of my heart. And the difference is because I felt I spent, what, 365 days in a cell a year. I know within a year time, I can collect me 1 million to 1.5 million can. And like I said, that's 50 to $75,000 when I used to go to school. So to me, I'm saying to myself, I can do that. I don't care what it takes. I'm not going back. And like I say, in 22 days, it'd be 25 years, I didn't go back. Yeah, that's good, man. Because let me tell you something, OG. A lot of people be like, okay, yeah, you help start cash money, cash money wrapped about you. Uh, you know, they, you know, they, 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 every, the cash, I'm cash money. That's what everybody would say, right? But I want everybody to know this. When I got out of prison, I went straight to New Orleans. Let me touch on this because you, I, I forget about Luba Trader though. You know I'm getting old. I was like that OG when I got out. It was me, my mother, my brother in the car, right? Every car that passed by us, Teddy went up looking up. My mom said, Terrence. Every car, when we turn, they turn, my mom was like, Terrence. Car's going to turn like we turn. Car going to, what were you, I was like, mom, all right. But I just was paranoid, spooking out, you know. But um, I, I said to say all this here too, which because I want to touch on what you just said about not going back to prison. And Hopefully, people will feed off this because of this. Yeah, you see my people successful, multi-million, they're still in it, got Wayne, you know, had Wayne, Drake, Nicki Minaj, some of the best or the biggest artists. They flying jets, they living good. I come home, I didn't get a red carpet, I didn't get money, I didn't, well, Slim, you know, took care of me, but me and Birdman's at odds. But I haven't been to none of the mansions, I haven't rode none of the fancy good stuff. But I'm content with what I have right now, and I'm happy. And if I have to work at McDonald's, I'm about to say the Waffle House. I've been going that lately. I like the grits and eggs. I'm going to Mickey D's. I prefer to go to Popeyes. That way I can bring a batter home. But OG, if I could work in prison and get my job, I should clean the microwaves. And, I mean, I should clean the phones and computers. OG, I should get forty something dollars an hour. I mean, I'm lying. Forty something dollars a month. If I can survive off that. I can come out here and survive. Now, I would say this. Yeah, we had free water, free light. I didn't have rent. True. But now I have a job where I'm able to pay my bills. I pay rent, man. I feel, listen, when my PO came to my house, and you know, he want to make sure that I really live, he said, let me see the lease. I didn't have a copy of the lease. So I hit my landlord. I said, hey, can you see my copy of the lease? 
I was nervous because I was staying the landlord and gave me a, 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 a fake house or whatever. I think, I, you know, I don't know. So uh, he emailed it over to me, OG. When I got show my PO, that was one of the best feelings I had got because I was like, you know what? This is my name. Nobody can't put me out of here. You know, so that, that really made me feel good to be able to come home, stand on my own too, and get me a house, get me a car, pay my car no. Man, salute to all the women out there. And I apologize to a lot of women that I took for granted coming up. And I said it to say this here. I didn't realize that it take a lot of stuff, man, in the house. Oh, gee, my mother drove from New Orleans with my little brother seven hours in the truck to come make sure I was okay out here. And she went to Walmart. The lady had to spend a thousand dollars. I said, Mama, wait, stop. She was trying to buy me a TV and some more stuff. I said, Mama, stop, stop, hold up. I'm like, I'm looking at the stuff we had. We only had was curtains, or uh, 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 what that stuff for the floor, or uh, Fabuloso, uh, uh, ammonia, all the stuff to clean the house, towels. But I was like, Mama, I spent, I was like, I felt bad, man, but my mother, but I said to say this here, salute to all the women and, and men too who have a, either you own the house, you rent the house, lease the house, whatever. Man, it's, I see why women now be needing child support because I just take all that for granted. But man, it take a lot to have a house, man. But I feel good that I got my own. You know what I'm saying? I could come in here, kick back. Uh, oh, yeah, OG, it's another story. I had bought a TV uh, Walmart, right? The TV was a, a Roku or Roku, whatever that thing, Roku. <laughs> I turn it on and it got all these apps pop up on the TV. So I'm like, what I'm going to do with this? I'm used to turning the TV on and clicking the channel. So now I got another problem, right? I don't know how to work this TV. I learned, I saw YouTube. I clicked that, then I saw I could type in. I used to watch YouTube for like three, four days straight. Then I got tired of why I had to watch everything on YouTube, all of the interviews. I started coming home, OG, and just laying the dark because I didn't know how to work the TV. It wasn't until a month later that uh, Sweepy came out here with me. So he knew all this old stuff. He uh, he just put Netflix on here uh, last week, so I, I, I could watch Netflix. Then he gonna tell me this, OG. Uh, we need a fire stick. I go get two fire sticks from Target. Plug them up. Now he don't know how to he don't know how to set the fire stick. I said, you know how to break it? No. Yeah, I can go on. Man, I got one still in my box in my room. Never open it. And one here in my living room, over here somewhere. And he ain't programming yet for me, OG. So I don't know how to work the teeth, but now he got it on Netflix. So I can turn that on and I just watch. Oh no, I used to watch all the wildlife. Discovery, all the lines and bears and all that stuff. But uh, yeah, man, I'm really enjoying out here, OG. You about to leave? But but you know what? Listen, man. See, you deserve that, man. Because once again, guess what? You know why you there? If you don't go into do that damn law library, if you went out there and want to tell a war story, oh man, we had this. You know what? See, I always tell people this, man. You got a person that'll come along. They be in prison. They be in that yard. They'll tell you. Um, they'll tell you a million dollar story about the yacht, the bands and the cars and the house and the jewelry and everything. They'll tell you a one point five million dollar story. Then right after that, let me get a cigarette. Yo, man, hold on. Wait a minute. Here. Yo, this, this will kill me, OG. I just put a towel up in my locker because I keep my locker over there. Come in your room and then I hustle first. Hey, yo, you have a suit or you have a summer sauce like a bar? You know I got that. It's in my locker. But, you know, I always tell them, you don't like summer sauce because you go get on the phone and want to run and call them girls or on an email or on an MP3. So you can't like cookies and Zuzus and Wham Wham because you didn't buy that. And then you have a lot of guys that play those games in prison, man. Yeah. Oh, matter of fact, that's what I got on my on my uh, Patreon page, Prison Stories. I talk about my experience in prison. So make sure people go support that. Hey, listen, folks, like I told you, we got a lot of good stuff, man. Like to me, like right now, if you sit back and you think about it, even a thumbnail, man, you look at it right now, and I put down it. Welcome home, un Uncle Gangster. That's what it say, man. Look, Who that is? Hold Ken? Up. Hold up. Welcome home. His name is. His hey, name yo, you is, <laughs> His name is Ken. Here, here, man. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, thank you, nephew. <laughs> yeah, man. Here my glasses, man. Here my oh, glasses. Gee. Man. You know, oh, hey. gee. Hey, sweet hey yo, please, get him some glasses, man. Hey, oh, he, oh, he get on me all the time about that too, OG. You know, I'm one of the ones. You know, I feel like, well, I can, listen. We had worked the other night. We talk about how we you talk about about get glad blah. So I said, well, I can see Ben you at night. He can't really see right. So I said, what that say on that wall? 
So I had to, I had to seen it, right? I was here to read it, but I had walked by early and seen it. He couldn't read it. So me and him go ahead all the time about my eyes and he can't see too, man. Hey, hey bro, but people don't understand, man. Like those are stuff that goes. I'm saying those are the stuff that happened. Those are stuff right now. Our eyesight. That's what go. That's what go every time, man. Now, hey, look, wait a minute. I'm take that. I didn't mean to put that one up there, man. I don't like that one, man. You know, check the body <laughs> count, man. Lots of body or whatever, man. So they must be. Like, they must be talking about you, man. I, I don't recall, man. Oh, gee, think about this. Hold up. You, you, you was in the game before me. So at the end of the day, they looking at this here. Yeah, we on some positive now, but you got. They looking at our past. And it is some heavy right now on this channel, OG. Yeah, it, it, and it is. And, and like I said you know? right now, like I told you, shout out to my man, ICU Studio Critique, man. You know, like and I told Richard. you, man, ICU Studio Critique, like I told you, even when we was talking and you told me what you needed or whatever, what I told you, I said, look, man, I don't do that. I said, but I'm going to do is I'm going to plug you into my brother, my people. Because once again, that's what this is all about. Like, you got too many people got that crab in the barrel mentality. They don't want to see other people doing good. So you know what they're going to do? They're going to pull you. Anytime they see you doing good, they're going to try to pull you back down. I don't got time for that, man. The difference hey. is as long as you continue to be who you are and what you are and what you represent today, it's nothing in the world that I won't do. Because that's what it's all about, man. Because once again, like I put up a thumbnail. What do Brian Glaze gives? And right now, the OG. And right now, Ter Ter Terrence Gangster William from the original Hot Boy. What do we have in common? The difference is right now, we got a story. We got a powerful story. We are blessed. We are highly favored. At one point in time, we was in nothing. We was in love with the street. We was addicted to the fast money. You know what I'm saying? We was addicted to when somebody do something to us, we want to prove a point. We'll put them in the ground. You know what? What that got us? Nowhere. Heartaches. Come on, man. What LG. And to you just right say. Okay. You just said something, right? Grab my attention. Uh, you know, but at the end of the day, you know, I just look at that God put us two together because when critique, when you introduce me to that guy, he jumped right into business. Man, a man been helping me out, and it's been a real good blessing. Uh, uh, you put me and that guy together, man, because critique been real, real helpful for me, man. And he put me right where I need to be, man. So I really appreciate it and thank you for that. But let's look what you say. And hold up, hold up. Hey, come on, hey, come the doctor, doctor, Elisa World at Terrence Gangster William at BGG. Thank you for sharing the loss of time, money, love, and positive experience associated with incarceration and trauma. Because once again, that's why I said right now is me and you, we're gonna be going on her platform. And right now is we're gonna be talking about a lot of different things, man. This is only the beginning, man. Because right hey. now, if it if it's not positive, if it's not enlightening, if it's not right now taking stuff to the next level, because once again, we had like right now is man to me, we had like a lot in common. We went away basically about the same age, but the difference right now is like, look, right now, look, I love what you're doing. I encourage what you're doing. I support what you're doing. And like I said right now, whatever the BGG movement can do for you is done. Hey, OG, let me tell you this here. Let me see how good God is. One of my childhood friends uh, a few days ago, he had sent me a, a, a post that somebody had posted up, some disrespectful stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And I explained, I said, listen, man, I say, I know what it is. Uh, I welcome everything that's coming to me because I know what I signed up for. I say, so happen you run in a circle that's a bunch of ignorant young hood dudes. I say, my circle is different now. I'm reaching out to people that's intelligent, that's on something positive, and that's on a different vibe. So I don't get as many of, of those disrespectful, ignorant messages that you get. And right now, it just clicked on me that at, at, I had just told him that and now here, I meet you a, a week later, and now I got the doctor right here that's giving me a shout out. Man, God, good. So you think I'm worried about what them boy be saying to me? <laughs> hey, 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 but you know what? Like I tell you right now, is even now, like, you know, when people always act, you know, um, I remember my man, Howard Pappy Mason. Pappy was like right now was like, you know, a, a street legend, man. Uh, I read about him. 
uh, 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 he was like one of those guards, what they call street guards. And the difference is right now is I remember when I told Pap, I see your Pap, man. You know what? Here it is. This is what they got. This is what they trying to do. When I went to, you know, Lorenzo Fat Cat Nichols said, yo, they want you. They want Pappy. They want me. They want the Chinese Connect. When I went there and told them, look, let your moms, may I so rest in peace, let your wife, let your sister, let my stepbrother, let everybody, let them go against us. And right now we're going to get live. Bingo. What he told me, no. You go to trial first. Let's see what they got against you. Then I go to trial. So once again, like I said, I am not the smartest person in the whole white world. But I am not the dumbest. So the different words, I'm saying, hold up. Do you heard what you just say to me? You want to use me as a scape? No, I couldn't do that. I'm not going to do that. So now the tables start turning. So once again, you already got life. I don't got nothing. Despite I'm a career criminal, despite they looking for me from bodies, I know that. So you know what I did? I made a deal. And see, people don't understand. But once again, like I said, when I made a deal, guess what? Everything they came to me with, I pled to the murders. I pled to what I did, what some of my people that was already gone, they was dead, they did. So even when they talk about, well, you know, you, you made statement against other people, that's a lot of time out. If they came to me and asked me a question about these guys and they know I know, I didn't lie to them. I told them exactly. If they ask me right now, guess what? Is Michael Jordan the GOAT? And I told them, no, Michael Jordan is not the GOAT. You lying. They rip up your agreement. So to me, like I say, when Pappy came at me, he saw, yo, well, what people going to think? I say, Pappy, those that love me, still going to love me. Those that hate me, still going to hate me. And Bang. see, that's the difference. See, that's why we are so brainwashed and we are so lost because, once again, people so with the snitch and with the cooperate, whatever, let he or she, while sin, cast the first damn stone. So to me, regards to what, like I say, I don't get caught up into it. Only thing I'm mad about with my life is I got caught up in all that BS in the first place. Because what I'm doing now, if I can do it now, I had it in me to do it back then. But I was too hey. lazy. I wanted to take shortcut. OG, you know what? And I like what you just said because a lot of people ask me now, do I regret anything or what could I take back? And you know what I always tell people? I don't regret nothing I've done in life. I won't take nothing back. Because what I've done has helped me become the man I am today. Because now I can tell people, yo, I've been through this. This was going to happen. This was this, this. I have a testimony for them, you know. And uh, I like, I get on the social media and entertain a lot of the bulls sometimes. I be bored. So I go joke back. But I had said this. When I first was starting out on Instagram, when I had a couple of hundred followers, I was like, listen. I said, once I get a thousand followers, all y'all who be calling me a rat, who be sending me disrespectful stuff, I'm not going to answer you the more because at that point, I got a thousand uh, uh, followers, so I'm moving up. So once I got that thousand, I still was a little, because you know, you still got that little street, man. You'd be like, oh, you know, I would go back and answer a few of them, but now I just see the comment, I read them, then I just delete them or block them off my page. And they had to sell it, they had to, because a lot of them are internet gangsters. They are hide behind fake pages and say what they got to say to you. You know, a lot yeah. of them not going to say it to your face. Even though I'm a changed man, I always tell people, man, I don't never want to go back to prison. I don't want no problems, but if a fire start, I will put it out, you know. But at the end of the day, man, leave me alone. I am, I'm man, enjoying man. life, you know. Why, why, why are we signed? So, like, right now, we never met. You know, we met right now. It's through on um, internet or whatever, social media. But it's like right now, like, I used to tell people the same thing. Like, right now, I don't want no problem. Not saying the problem come my way. I won't be able to handle it. It's like, I don't want to deal with it. Right now, mm -hmm. is when you put a lot of stuff behind you, guess what? That's what I did. Put it behind me. Why? Because once again, when you've been there, you've done that. I don't got nothing to prove. That's the problem with us. We want to prove the wrong thing. You got people out in the street now. You got people in the workplace. They get into an argument. They get into a fist fight. Who's the winner? You don't have no winner because guess what? One hit the other. The other one hit their head. He died. You going to jail. What for? You got two losers. Nobody won. Over what? miscellaneous stuff over what bs man temper is what get us in trouble prize will keep us there man and that's what we got to keep in mind we got to teach these young kids start being my you know right now mentor you know what i'm saying and right now like i told you man my prayers with you and your family and trust and pray that your son you know what gets from under that man and learn his lesson man because that p now system is not for nobody man you're right 
I saw that happen with two guys in prison. One guy had four months to go home. Another one had two weeks to go home. They got a, they, they started. They had a fight. One the one with the two weeks fell and hit his head and died. And the young boy got an extra five years. He was four months to the door. And I seen that happen. And in, in, in the holdover guy was fighting. And I think he took fifteen years. A guy hit his head and died. I've See, seen those kind of things. Simple sign and stuff. Do you think you meant for that to happen? Right now, it's only thing you want people to understand, man. It's not worth it, man. But we want to prove something. I want to prove that, you know what? I'm a tough guy. I want to prove that I'm all that. I'm not all that. You know what I'm saying? Period. Right. I, I, I am not nothing or whatever. Hey, babe, I'll call you when I wrap up. All right. Okay. Hey, but see, that's what people don't understand, man. It's not, but listen, bro. Like, hey, look, man. You, hey, look, man. That phone ring, boy. You better like ring, ring. See, wait till you get there, man. Hey, oh. wait, one day we're gonna be on it, and I'll be like, yo, what's up, what's up, gangster? Oh, uh, now I gotta go, man. No, so, OG, listen, as you and I've been talking, Queen Friend been blowing my phone up. She been hit. I keep pressing the thing, like, chill out. She, she been hit my phone. And she be like, what you doing, man? I told you to tag you. She be going off on me too, man. Yo, I understand already. I'm getting, I already be getting it. That's why I'm laughing now because I be going through that. All right. You know? Like, like somebody just join. That's my man, the professor, man. Keep teaching the youth. Professor in the building, man. See, that's okay. What, say, bro. what I up? Meet, I meet so many different good people, so many positive people, whatever. And like I try to tell people, I am not proud of who I once was. Between the age of 14 and 24, I hated that individual. That individual stole 15 years out of my life that I can't get back. But I love who I am today, man. And that's the difference, man. So what we got to do is, man, keep, you know what I'm saying? Like I always try to tell these guys, like somebody was telling you why they couldn't become Muslim because you got to pray five times a day. What they understand is no prayer, no power. Less prayer, less power. More prayer, more power. Much prayer, much power. Well, I can't do that. No prayer, no power. Less prayer, less power. More prayer, more power. Much prayer, much power. What they say? You, you, you don't want to do that. Or oh, I'm too get out of here. Majority. I always tell them the brothers that pray together stay together. You're right. Majority of Clack, Clacton Bell. Majority of the viewer watching are here for enlightenment. I have lived a life similar to both of you. Unfortunately, I had my first son, and I joined the Navy to change my life. And the life live. Hey, Claxton Bell, man, shout out to you. Shout man. out Once again. Yeah, that's what it's all about, man. Right now, when you learn, man, when you learn, when you learn. See, a lot of times right now is you don't have to be a test dummy. I was a test dummy. Right now was here is OG. You know, what I'm saying Terrence, Terrence Gangster William. He was a test dummy. But look at us now. We can sit back and talk about different things or whatever. But that's what it was then. That's the part of environment that we grew up in. Right now was, but guess what? We was able to escape. We just right. to wake up before it became extremely too late, man. Hey, listen, folks, make sure. Hey, tell them where they look at you at. Tell them where to get your Tell them how to follow you, man. At Terrence Gangster Williams Home, H O M E, all one word. That's my Instagram. My YouTube is Gangster, and a little dash, D T H E, original hot boy. And I have a, a what do you call it? That Patreon page. Patreon page. That's called Terrence Gangster Williams. Well, I'm going to have my interviews and different things I'm going to be talking about uh, every month. Uh, me and Queen France going to team up so you can come over there and support me over there. Somebody named K. What's that last name? Help me out, OG. Hey, K. That's my girl. K Solo. That's my girl. Hey, hey, listen. That's the queen right there, man. You know, okay. What up, K? Powerful good people coming on, man. I see that. That's what I need. See, when you, I learned this too, and I should tell guys, when you're in the prison system, when you hang out with a lot of druggies, people want to rob people, people want to start fights, that's who you are. A person can tell who you are by who you hang with. And I would like to have company like the people who you are indulged in and the people that's logged on to your station because at the end of the day, you know, it's a lot of negative stuff. But a person like me, you know, I'm built for this. Year. I can take it all negative, positive. Bring it on, you know, because I, I was once in that street and I knew I ain't never cared. If you weren't part of my team, I didn't care about you. So, you know, I'm just happy to be free. But I welcome all the comments because, like you say, I knew what I signed up for when I decided to get out of prison. And I made a good decision because I'm free now. And it's a lot of good men I left in prison. I left Big Meech in prison. Okay. You know what? Even with that situation, right?
you know, and I heard you speak about that. And I'm actually the question because once again, you know, um, when I started doing my homework and they had a little story talking about you and Big Meech, y'all was together, y'all got into a fight. You know what? Do you want to elaborate off of that, man? Yeah, of course. That's a lie. When Big Meech first came to the compound, okay, first I didn't, I had been locked up, you know, I didn't know, I didn't know about BMF because I was in prison. It wasn't until 2005, a guy was like, yeah, the BMF dude got a lot. I was like, who that? You know, they brought it up on a prison yard. Um, I had did an interview with Ozone Magazine, uh, Beverly. Uh, shout out to Beverly. Uh, she gave me an opportunity to be heard. Um, but uh, this guy I had did time with, you know, back you know, when I first came in the system, uh, he was on a yard. He was walking on the walk with this light-skinned guy with braids. So I was walking because... On a yard, they give you a 10 minute move. You got to get where you're going. They're going to close the move on. So I, I should be walking fast. So it was like, uh, dude was like, What's up, gangster? I'm like, Man, who are you? He was like, Man, I'm such a, we used to say, I said, Oh, I don't know you. I don't remember you. And I kept going. I kind of like, This the dude, whatever. So later on that day, dude was like, Yo, big meat on the compound. I was like, How you look? He said, He light skin with braid. I said, Yo, he was just with this guy with some dread. Tell me, he know me with some diamonds in his mouth. I said, I must have made the dude look bad in front of big meat. So for dinner time, they let us roam the compound. And, um, I had walked down towards the chapel and I seen the guy I was like, I, you know, I had to, I try to clean up, you know, I was like, yo, man, what's up? Yo, I need somebody talking. And so I, and Big Meese was kind of standing a little from us, but and he was, we, him kept making eye contact. But before he could get to me, you had a guy would stop him each time. So I was like, yo, this guy must be somebody, you know, and every time they did, they keep stopping him before he can make it to me. So he finally made it to me. And the guy earlier said, yo, this gang's gangster, this Big Meese. I was like, oh, what's up? And we shook hands and talked. And Big Meese's exact words were, man, my heart go out to you because I read your story, man. And, um, you know, I wanted to meet you. So I was like, okay, it's a legend here telling me, you know, he want to meet me, you know, because I see how a lot of these guys on the compound is gravitating to him, you know, and, and it's putting up on him, giving him respect. So um, we go on the wreck, y'all, we talking. And um, I never forget Big Meese was like, man, you know, I was a million on, I was a billionaire on the street. He said, man, I said, well, listen, Meech, now with your name, the way it is and stuff, People gonna be watching you, man. I said, you got to start doing interview, talking to the average youth, talk positive. His exact words were, man, listen, when I do an interview, I'm gonna let them youngsters know how to sell drugs and how to get away with I said, look, right now you just a little bitter because they got you now. I said, but you have a change of heart later. So it was this old head named Lloyd. I forgot his last name from New York. Him and Big Meeks started kicking it real tough. And um, actually, there's a book out. It's this old timer. He had did time in the fair back in the 1970s. Big Meese's name is on that book. It's dealing with some law stuff. I think his name Michael or something. But anyway, I said, Lord, listen, man. I said, man, you got to get Big Meese with this website because when did they have hooked me up with a, web, a blog where I said, reach out to the at-risk youth? Excuse me. So um, who hooked you up with that? He said, man, I'm on it. Huh? Who hooked you up with that? Wendy Day out in Atlanta. Okay. Rap Coalition. Okay. All right. Beautiful woman, man. She's been helping me my whole beard, too. Shout out to Wendy Day, Rap Coalition. Um. She helped people out with the music industry and stuff. So uh, anyway, um, I had told her, he said, yeah, I'm on it now. He said, man, yo, I'm about to get me. This is so uh, Big Meat and I would talk. We would kick it. He was a real cool, humble dude, man. Very respectful. Um, you know, he talk about the streets. He liked to drink a little hooch and that wine and stuff. And if somebody cooking food, he going to buy all the food up, invite you to the cell. You know, he going to tell his little war stories, how he eat the club. And he a good dude, man. So I didn't realize the magnitude of social media till. Uh, when the story came out that I got beat up, this guy had a picture. He had my face cropped where it was bruised up and everything, right? So I called home. No, first I got a text message from one of my homies at the project. I hadn't heard from him in years. I'm like, he's like, man, you all right? I heard you got beat up. You know, big me. I was like, no, nah, I'm good. Everything cool. So I don't think none of it. Then I called home. I'm like, Terrence, you all right? He said, you went to the hospital. You got beat up. The guy, some guy jumped. I said, huh? Then Slim from Cash Money, you know, he was like, you all right, bro? I was like, yeah. He said, man, he said, because big me beats us. He's at the hospital. When it reached my mother and Slim, I knew it had to be something big, you know, because it was circulating on the on the YouTube, or whatever. So uh, I realized that this guy had T-shirts or something. He was just coming out with a story, I guess, to get views or what have you. But that was a lie. Uh, big me and Big Meats never had an argument. The only thing being me and Big Meats did on the wreck yard, I had a way of uh, like a convertible bird too. I was around him too. I would go somebody, to them and be like, "Somebody just asked about him. Somebody just asked about convertible bird." Yeah, real good dude, man. Listen, when I was on Common Fair, I could, it's certain food I used to like to eat on a regular line. And if I get caught, they'll take me on Common Fair. So, a convertible bird will go work out and he'll come in with a main line almost. Oh, like, 
games is over. You want that? Like, anybody have gravy right? Anybody have chicken or something? Like, yeah, give me that. Or uh, uh, spaghetti with the meat sauce. He'll go get me a tray and stuff. But uh, real good dude, too, man. Good dude. But uh, 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 Big Meats, I used to be like, man, them girls, they don't come see them. What, I'm Big Meats? I used to get him out, you know, joking and clowning where the guys are laughing and stuff. But me and him never had a, all we never got disrespect with one another. Never raised our hand to one another. Uh, we went on the compound that long because it was a fight that broke out between BMF and uh, some guy from D.C. and some Muslims, a big fight on the yard. And um, one of my brothers from Philly went to the match and put out a 10-inch shank. I said, what's to do with that? He said, man, such and such got to finish that because he started this. So the D.C. called one out there, the old heads, and I told me because Meese lived next door to me. I said, listen, I had two knives on me at this time. I said, Meese, listen, got a South came together for Meese. A lot of people came together, but it was a bunch of youngsters ready to gang fight. And he was some old head that did 20 years, been in the penitentiary, was ready to kill. I said, Meese, man, you about to go out here. It's not going to be a gang fight. He said, yeah, I know, but I got to go. So the dude who started the fight, he was from Brooklyn, matter of fact. You know how you Brooklyn guys are, man. Y'all, yo, uh -huh. son, word be, word up. And you know how y'all are. So uh, he the one started the fight, matter of fact, man. So uh, he uh, he go here in front of me and Meech. So the lieutenant stopped me. He said, what's your name? I said, William. He said, send me see your ID. Show him my ID. He said, what's your name? He said, Flannery. Big uh, me said his last name. He said, turn around. He said, Will you go back. I turned back, went back to my unit. I was happy. I had two knives on him. He pat me down. He locked me up, put handcuffs on him. They put Big Meach in the hole. Uh, I think 2010, so I, I never seen him after that. But we never had a fight. Man, never beat me up. That was a story. you know. And like I say, I welcome that because it helped me because now a lot of these people, I, I, I would say that a lot of these people have given me a voice. You know, with these stories they make up and all this stuff, because now people want to hit my side, and it helps me now. You know, they keep me in the spot, like keeping me, uh, making me a celebrity, so to speak. You know, yeah. now I'm, I'm, I know I'm a little C class right now, I'm working on the A class, but I take a little at a time. But yeah, that was a lot, man. Hey, but you know what? When you sit back and you think about different things and what you accomplished and everything that you've been through, like I told you, man, you got a powerful story, powerful testimony. And like I told you, man, like, look, man, I got a lot of different things that I'm working on or whatever. And to me, whatever I can do or what we can do to keep, continue to work together, consider it done. And right now is when you want me to come on your platform. You know what? We'll do the same thing. And All right. Thank you, OG. We got to keep this going, man, because once that's again, like I said, I'm here. I, I, I don't do nothing. I'm kind of I'm kind of looking at right now. What does OG Brian Glee Gibbs and Terrence Gangster William, the original hot boys, have in common? And even right now, like I say, understand what is a hot boy? Who was the hot boys, man? Who's the original the hot, hot boys? The hot boys, um, it was a bunch of us in the project, but the, the ones that stand out was it, it was uh four of us that, that was left is Dooney, he's deceased, Sterling, he's deceased, Mosquito is deceased. And let me tell you what's crazy about that. Sterling and I was together when he was killed uh, downtown. Mosquito had just left me and he was killed. And I had just got off the phone while I was in the fair with Dooney when he was shot and killed. Um, we ran the streets of New Orleans, sold drugs, robbed people out of drugs, shot people. You know, all of us was uh, arrested for mur multiple murders. Um, police would be looking for us. Enemies looking for us. Girls coming to the project looking for us. So we was the hot boys, you know. It's like, you know how some women pull up, you might walk up in the, uh, uh, in the courtyard and guys are just a scatter and walk up like, man, you hot, man. Man, well, I don't want you around me, man. You know, somebody might come shooting. I might get hit. Or uh, police might come through here. I'm hustling and y'all bringing heat over here. So, you know, that hot boy term stuck with us and we was the hot boys. But I seen a, 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 this guy right here say he went to Xavier University. Yeah. I, I, used to, I used to literally go around uh, college campus and mess with girls from out of town, but I couldn't go hang on Xavier because my, my daughter's mother uh, did hair out there, and a lot of girls went to her beauty salon, and I had a, uh, I had a navy blue uh, uh, 400 SE Mercedes Benz, and I didn't want to get busted. So I used to go around Xavier, but I couldn't hang out on your compound, bro. But shout out to you, though. Hey, yeah. but just like just like I told you right now, man, like look at that, man. Like to me right now is I can go on, man. I can go on and on and on and on and on. But look, here, here it is right now where I'm at, man. They got the thunderstorm, you know, right, right now. Nature's talking, man. But listen, folks, make sure you go subscribe. You know what I'm saying subscribe to Terrence Gangster William YouTube channel. Follow him on Instagram. Right now, he did a hell of an interview with Vlad TV. And like I told you right now, he got a, he got the Patreon page. Once you go to YouTube, you can check it out. Google his Patreon page, man. Sign up. This brother got a lot of good stories, a lot of inspiration, a lot of knowledge. Like, look what he did. He
OG, you broke up. That thunder, where you at, OG? Shut you all. Do I need to take over from here? What is this? Glaze. Oh, you're on fire. You are mastering the craft of storytelling, positivity, and authenticity. Yeah, OG really is. And I appreciate OG letting me come on this platform. And uh, I will continue to come whenever you need me. Because all I do is work and stay home and, you know, just hang out. So whatever I need to reach out, whoever got something positive going on, reach me on my Instagram, and I'm there. I'm out. Love. One. Man, we've been on this joint so long. I'm at five percent, boy. Frank, Frank, blow the fuck. She got mad with me because she want me to tag. I don't know how to tag. She had to tell me what happened to me now. She hit me, I ain't answered. I mean, go here, I told you I was going to interview. 